couple of steps we've skipped on this stuff so far, but you guys expected um, when you come in for your internals to set up your resource down, make sure you have your plan set up, and make sure everything as secure as you can make it. And remember, you bring set the two pieces of glassware with the solution that they're going to contain. So the pet is we're measuring as your acid, and it's set to either 25 ml or 20 ml, uh, depending on the one that you're given on the day of the assessment, so either 20 or 25 ml. Um, so I've already rinsed that with some acid. The burette is already full with base in this case, so I filled, uh, I rinsed the burette with the base um, at the start as well, and I filled, filled the burette up to the top, so we have a full 50 ml in my burette to start with. Um, I used a uh, funnel to aid the, the filling of the burette, and I've removed the funnel head and finished, finished that filling. So now I want to get a 25 ml sample of my unknown acid. Now how do I know which of these two beakers to choose from? Well, if you can see the front, that this one has been labeled base, and this one I can label as acid. So my acid is here. I can wear a safety glasses for this. And we had a couple of issues with the suspect on the last day, so if you do come across a pump which isn't working, just tell me straight away we can eliminate that from the room. Okay, so here we go. Get 25 ml of acid in here. Obviously, you don't want to get any air bubbles in here either, so just check for that as you fill. The easiest way around that is to make sure that the tip of the pipette is fully submerged in the solution before you draw any solution into it. So I go a little bit beyond the mark, and then I want to just get the acid fitting a little bit of a mix on top of the mine. So with these pumps you may have to hold on to the, the dial a little bit just to maintain your volume. I'm pretty happy with that. Just give it a bit below. Okay. Right, I'm happy with that. So let's do my transfer. Now you can just roll the wheel or you can just press the lever. Either way, just to make sure you release all your acid into your pump as fast. Alright, and you can tip that last drop off the side of the flask if you want. We need to be consistent with that, so we'll all do the same thing. Now, as well as consistency in the method, we're going to use phenol saline as the indicator in this particular titration. Phenol saline is an appropriate indicator to use when you're doing an acid base titration. So remember, we have base inside the burette, which we have a known concentration for, and then we have our acid inside the conical flask now, 25 ml. So what you guys need to take note of now is the color of this gold when you have two drops of phenol saline indicator. So one, two, and three drops there in that case. So, so what, what color is it? Clear. Right? That's clear of color. Right? So an acidic solution with phenol saline indicator is, is clear of color. Right? Uh, what I also want is a little piece of white paper again, boys, so just some blank white paper from my scrap, scrap paper box over there. Thank you. Also, this burette looks like it's a little bit too far out of the stand, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it in just a little bit so that I'm, I'm really ready to go now. So pull it in just a little bit. Thank you. I'll put the paper underneath the conical flap just to aid the contrast. We talked about that the last day. I'm going to drop this burette down into the neck of the conical flap to avoid that tip hitting the neck of the conical flap. So I'm now ready to start the first titration. So I have my little generic template here for doing titrations. Now this is a good example of how to lay out your table of results. Uh, the initial reading should be 50 ml, so it's filled up from the top. Uh, so it's a 50 ml reading, and the final reading is going to be when we get a color change with our indicator. So all we have to do now is open the tab on the burette and swirl the glass as we go. When we see the first sign of the color change, we need to start slowing down. So you can start off initially with the quite a, a relatively quick screen of the base. But I find opening the tab on my left hand works quite well. And then swirl on the right, that's just the right handed. So relatively fast screen is okay initially. That's probably a little bit too fast. And as soon as you see a flash of color, you want to stop it to being just one drop at a time. And this is your rough titration. Now 
If titration is higher value, then typically it's going to be over 10 ml. If it's less than 10 ml, then it's not really about titration because it's too much room for error. So your tighter value is going to be at least over 10 ml. That much you can be sure. And what your value is going to be compared to is that of the teacher who performed the situation using the unknown solution that you had on the day of the test. So your tighter value must be within plus or minus 0.2 ml of the teacher in order to be in line correctly. So still no sign of any color change. Take a quick look up there. I've added over 17 ml. because it happens to stun this particular concentration of, um, of acid before. And until you do your first rough titration, you don't have an idea of how much volume you need to add. So it is a little bit disconcerting when after about 10 ml, I'm still not seeing any color change. So don't mind the fact that that's not sitting correctly. Not very good now. Okay, so don't be thrown off by the fact that it may take up to 24 ml in this case to get the first sign of color change. But the color is changing, so I know that I have the right solution in the right container. Alright, so we continue now. We're going to go one drop at a time. So you've got to be really careful with the tap. You must continue swirling, because if you don't swirl, right there's one drop going. I'm swirling the whole time. One drop at a time is coming in. See that, but it's just one drop at a time. Still changing color, but it's not staying pink. So it's a kind of a pinky light eye color you're going for here. Alright, and as soon as it stays for that pink for over 15 seconds, then I'm, I'm happy that's reached the end point. But it's not there yet. So it's a bit of a tedious waiting game. See, at this point, you're tempted to speed things up. I'm tempted to speed things up, but I must try and exemplify good practice here so you boys don't speed things up. Because once you get your first titration done, you can basically jump that first 20 ml, just that 20 ml directly, and then slow it up a little bit closer to the end point. This is just a rough titration. Stop that in, and I'm still squirting, and for 15 seconds, right, I would say add one more drop there and it's reached the end point, because you can see that it's changed clear again. Right, so that 15 second time frame is very important, and in this case, I just want one more drop to start on the This is critical. Okay, that was two additional drops there. That's my rough titration. Now, what I want then is a pen. Grab that pen there, SMG. Right, and I want to make sure, so again, my red is not sitting very um, straight here, so I'm going to get that straight before I take this reading. I'll straight as we can get this particular piece of equipment. You work with what you have. All right. You want to be at high level when you're managing these, so if you have to get down in one knee, then you get down in one knee. All right. And with your, with your tighter values, boys, I want you to close them to two depths in place. Two different places for your cited values that's kind of safe, right? Alright, so if you're quoting your cited values as 26.5, then you won't be getting next. 26.50. In this case, what I have is 26.45. You happy with that, guys? Can you verify that? Yeah. Come over a bit closer. <laughs> Can we all here and see that? 26, um, it's not quite on the 26.5, it's on 26.45. Yeah, yeah. That's between those two last things. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> All 
right, 26.45 ml, and that's my final reading. So then the cycle value is the difference between 50 and that there. So it's like 55, 6, 9, 3. So 23.65 ml is what I've actually added. Okay, so 20, so 23.65 ml of what, uh, what I've actually added. Um, I'll put 26. Point, I did this wrong last time as well. I've added 26.45 ml. All right. So what you need to do then is you take your um, final reading there with 26.45 ml, and that's the starting point for your next titration. So ignore the fifty that I have in that box and just start at zero zero right now. So 26.45 ml is your first hydro value. Okay, now for my second titration, I'm just going to set it up really quickly to show you how much quicker it is to do a second titration. But I need to make sure I have at least 26.45 ml left in this duress in order to do a second titration. And I don't actually. So what you have to do here is you have to refill your duress. So the problem with getting a titer which is so big is you probably can only get one titration out of your entire duress at that have to top it up again. So let's hope the next Friday your tidal values are not that big. It's nice if you can get a big two titrations out of the full you get what I'm saying? Right, so otherwise you have to keep topping up all the time. Right, any questions on that? So that's basically my demonstration of how to do a titration. What you do then is you do your tighter three times, right? There's my first titration value there was 26.45 ml. I want to get two more values which would be within 0.2 mils of that. So if I got 26.25, that would be acceptable or concordant. If I got 26.30, then I have three values which are concordant. And then the second box on your sheet is say to work out the average type of volume used. So you add those three up and divide them by three. Alright, that's your average tighter. And that average type of value must be within 0.2 ml of what the teacher gets. Right. And then there's a few other calculations that you do in the back of the sheet that we can stop with and connect it. So if you just stop out there, I'm happy after that.